वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टू ऑनलाइन क्लासेस ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स फॉर क्लास एट इन दिस वीडियो वी गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द चैप्टर नंबर थ्री विच इज द अंडरस्टैंडिंग क्वारिलेटरल्स ऑफ एन सी आर टी टेक्सट बुक एंड वी लुक एट द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर ओके दिस इज द सेशन नंबर वन फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर माई सर दीपक गौतम टी जी टी मैथमेटिक्स इन केंद्रीय विद्यालय संगठन सो लेट स्टार्ट विद टू डेज क्लास द चैप्टर नंबर थ्री अंडरस्टैंडिंग क्वारिलेटरल इज डिडेड इन टू टोटल फाइव सब टॉपिक्स विच आर लिस्टेड इट आउट and we are going to discuss the first two sub topics which is the introduction part and the polygons okay so let's start with the introduction part first we have plane surface and plane curve you have already uh, studied about the plane surfaces and plane curve in your previous classes so just like let's recall them a plane surface is a flat surface that means a plane surface is a flat surface in which a straight line joining any two points lie completely on that surface simply you have to understand that a plane surface is a flat surface that means if you draw a line on the, on that surface all the points like if you draw this line all the points of this line are lying on the paper only okay so all such surfaces are called plane surface for example we have paper paper is a example of plane surface so when you draw a line or any curve on the plane surface all the points of that curve or a line will lie on that paper only okay next we have plane curve plane curve means number of points joined without lifting the pencil or pen from the paper paper and without retracing any portion of the drawing other than the single point that means if you draw any line or curve on a paper without lifting the pencil like if we are drawing this line or if we draw this curve we have drawn this curve without lifting a pen or the pencil okay all such <coughs> curve are called plane curve there should not be overlapping or retracing like if we draw a curve like this so there is a overlapping so it will be a curve but not a plane curve okay so a curve may be a open or a closed curve so you can see this one is a closed curve and while this line is a open curve okay next come to the polygons so polygons is a simple closed curve made of only line segment is called polygons polygons means it should be a, first there is two condition for a polygon first is it should be a closed that means it should be a closed and second is it should be made up of only line segments okay a polygon is a simple closed curve made made of only line segment is called polygons for example you can see this three figure these are made up of only straight line okay these are the only this is made up of only straight line is a closed curve similarly here also we have four straight line joined together and making a closed figure so all the poly all the figures which are closed and made up of only straight line are called polygons while you can see these example are of not polygon okay curves that are not polygon because they are made up of line one condition they are satisfying but they are not closed this it's open from this end also here we have the overlapping okay and this one is not closed also if we have a curve like this it is made up of three straight line then a curved surface here though it it is closed but on this three side it has straight line but here it has a curved surface so it will not be a polygon so only there are two conditions for a polygon it should be first it should be closed and second it should be made up of only line segment okay moving ahead we have classification of polygons we have the classification of polygon based on the number of side or the vertices okay if a polygon has three sides one two and three then it will be called a triangle and a polygon with four sides 1 2 3 4 is called quadrilateral and a polygon with you can see here five side is called pentagon polygon with six side is called hexagon polygon with six seven side is called heptagon and polygon with eight side is called octagon and polygon with nine side is called nanogon and polygon with 10 sides are called decagon and so on and a polygon with n side is called angon okay so this is the classification of polygon based on the number of side or you can say also number of vertices okay so why you can notice one thing here we are starting here from the 
number of side 3 ok so can we have a polygon with num number of side 2 so if we draw a polygon with 2 sides it cannot be a closed figure no matter how close you can draw them it will not be a closed figure also if you draw a line it's also a not it's not it's also a uh, not a closed figure okay to have a closed figure at minimum we should have three sides okay with minimum three number of sides we have a first closed figure and which is called the triangle okay so you have to learn and remember the name of this polygon based on the number of side or the vertices they have okay moving ahead then we have diagonals you've also studied the diagonals in your previous classes okay the diagonal is a line segment joining two non-consecutive vertices of a polygon is called diagonal simply a diagonal is a line segment that means it's a portion of a line which joins two non-consecutive vertices non-consecutive means the vertices which are not adjacent to each other okay of a polygon is called diagonal which means if we start from point P its adjacent vertices are S and Q that means if you join PQ and PS you will not get the diagonal the diagonal is the line segment diagonal is the line segment joining the non-consecutive non-consecutive means the vertices which are not adjacent so non-adjacent vert vertices vertice of P is only R so PR is a diagonal similarly for Q its adjacent vertices are R and P so when you join Q to R and P you will not get the diagonal but S is is its non adjacent vertices so when you join SQ or QS you will get a another diagonal okay similarly you can see for this figure and for A adjacent vertices B and E so its diagonal will be AC and AD similarly for B its angle will be BD and BE and for C its angle will be CE and CA and so on okay in the next figure also the diagonal there are only two diagonal because the adjacent for point L M and K are its adjacent vertices its only known adjacent vertices N so one diagonal is this LN and second one is KN okay so simply a diagonal is a line segment which join two non consecutive vertices of a polygon okay next we have interior and exterior of a closed curve as the name suggests interior means the portion inside a curve while the exterior means the area or the region outside the curve okay which is written here the area inside of a curve is called interior the area which is inside of a curve like this is called its interior and the area outside of the curve is called its exterior that means we have this curve and the area outside of it is called its exterior region okay so this is the interior and the exterior of a curve moving ahead we have next convex and concave polygon okay understand this carefully Convex polygon is a polygon in which all of its diagonal lie in the interior of the polygon which means a polygon in which all the diagonals lie in the interior for example if you draw a diagonal for this figure okay we have this vertice its adjacent vertices are this and this one its non adjacent vertices is remaining 3 so when you join this point to this you will get the diagonal okay for this point its adjacent vertices are this one and this one so remaining will be is remaining vertices will be its non adjacent vertices so when you join these you will get this diagonal okay then we come to the next vertice for this one its adjacent are this one and this one the remaining will be non adjacent so we can join it here we get another diagonal after joining this student you will get another diagonal and these two are already joined similarly for the next point its adjacent vertices are these two so we'll join it to the remaining point 
for first for this one this one is already joined then it's also already joined so these are you will go get its vertices you will find that all its diagonal are lying in the interior of this polygon okay so such polygons are called convex polygon that means what whatever the number of diagonals it has all the diagonal will completely lie inside the polygon you can see for the this figure also when you draw its diagonal it's also lying it's in its interior here also similarly for the remaining figure okay you can check all the diagonals of this polygon li are lying in the interior of this polygon so such polygon are called convex polygon so simply a polygon in which all the diagonals lie in the interior of the polygon is called convex polygon okay moving to the concave polygon so the concave polygon is the converse of this concave polygon it says a polygon in which one of one or more of its diagonal does not lie in the interior of the polygon that means if one diagonal or either more or more than one diagonal of the polygon are not lying in the interior that polygon will be called concave polygon for example in this one for this vertex these two are its adjacent vertices so only known adjacent vertices is this one so when you join these two you will get the diagonal when we come to this point its adjacent vertices are this one and this one sorry this these two are its adjacent vertices only one is left is this one so when you join these two you will get the diagonal but this diagonal is lying the outside of this polygon okay similarly when you uh, draw the diagonal connecting this non adjacent vertices again you will get a diagonal which is the in which is in the in exterior of the polygon similarly here also and for this case also that means one of their diagonal is lying outside the polygon that means the diagonals are lying in the exterior such polygon are called concave polygon okay i hope it's clear to you in convex polygon all the diagonal will be in, inside the polygon like this one and while in the concave polygon one or or, or the one or more of the diagonal will lie in the exterior of the polygon all such polygon are called concave polygon okay moving ahead now we have regular polygon regular polygon means a polygon in which the measure of all measure of its all the angle and the side is equal that means the measure of its all the angles and side is equal that means the measure of all the angle that is it has and all the side it has will be equal so all such polygon are called regular polygon for example in this triangle you can see this side is equal to this opposite side and also it's equal to this side so all the three sides are equal similarly this angle is equal to this angle equals to this angle the all three angle and the all three side are equal so you can call them equal <coughs> angular and equilateral we can call it equi angular and equi lateral equi angular means equal angle and equilateral means equal sides okay so regular polygons are equi angular and equilateral that means all it of its angle and all of its side will be equal in measure okay while in a regular polygon a polygon in which the measure of either its angle or this side or side is not equal that means it's not either equilateral or equilateral you can see here these two sides of this polygon are not equal also these two sides are not equal that means the side of this polygon are not equal similarly you can find that the this angle is not equal to the angle here it appears to be a 90 degree angle while this is a less than 90 degree that means neither this angle nor this side are equal such polygon are called irregular polygon same for this figure okay you can find out that the measure of this side and this side are not equal Similarly, the measurement of this angle is not equal to the this angle. That means it's neither equi 
angular and neither it's neither equiangular nor equilateral okay moving ahead next we have angle sum property first we have for triangle you have already studied angle sum property of triangle which says the sum of the three interior angle of a triangle is equals to 180 degree that means the sum of all the three angle of a triangle is equals to 180 degree okay for example if we have this triangle named a b c then the sum of the angle a plus angle b plus angle c will be equals to 180 degree it's called the angle sum property of a triangle okay next we have angle sum property of quadrilateral okay so for quadrilateral the sum of the four interior angle of a quadrilateral is equals to 360 degree that means the sum of the all of four of its angle will be equals to 180 degree so suppose let's name it a b c d then the sum of angle a plus angle b plus angle c plus angle d will be equals to 360 degree okay so it's the angle sum property of a triangle and a angle sum property of a quadrilateral in triangle the sum of its three interior angle is equals to 180 degree while for a quadrilateral the sum of its four interior angle is equals to 360 degree okay next we have the sum of the measure of the interior angle of a polygon given by the formula so we have a formula for the sum of the interior angle of a interior angles of a polygon of you can say any polygon is given by the formula n minus 2 into 180 degree write it degree okay for example the n here is representing n is equals to here representing number of sides okay for example let's take it for a triangle a triangle has how many side a triangle has three side that means the n is equals to three for a triangle now we can use this formula the sum of its angle will be its interior angle is equals to be a formula n minus 2 that means n here is 3 minus 2 into 180 degree 3 minus 2 is 1 into 180 degrees will be equals to 180 degree like we have written here the sum of the measure of this interior angle of a triangle is 180 degree and by this formula we have proved that the sum of the its angle is 180 degree you can check it also it for quadrilateral the number of side in a quadrilateral is n equals to 4 now you can check sum of its interior angle will be given by this again the same formula we have n minus 2 sorry n minus 2 n here is 4 minus 2 into 180 degree 4 minus 2 is 2 into 180 degree and 180 degree into 2 is 360 degree okay so we have to check it for the triangle and the quadrilateral this formula is satisfying by using this formula you can find the sum of the interior angle of a for any polygon okay just put the number of side here subtract 2 then multiply it by 180 okay so that's the introduction and the some relate definition of some related term for this chapter in next video we are going to start the exercise 3.1 okay before that you should know and learn these basic concept relating to the this chapter in the next exercise okay so that's all for today's class in next class we will start with the exercise 3.1 okay before that you should learn and, and understand all the definition and the concept mentioned in this video okay so that's all for now thanks for joining here thank you